Well, let us go to God in prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, with renewal, and revival of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter beginning in the 40th verse. A leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, If you choose, you, you can make me clean. Moved with anger, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer your cleansing, uh, what Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely, and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. How often in life, when we see a way out, when we see an answer to a problem of, of a healing or, or something that's plaguing our life, only to be told by someone, you may have the answer, but you're not worthy. Or someone else saying, you are so far gone. It can't be done. The world has a way of doing that every once in a while. So succumbing to all of these social and cultural or intellectual voices, we say to ourselves, and I hate these words, Lord, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to help myself. I can't do it. I don't have time. I don't have the energy. I'm too far gone, so why even bother with healing? So the story goes, a leper comes to Jesus. A leper who represents the people beyond the margins of society. Rabbis in those days considered them living corpses. But he had enough of the social norms. He had enough of, of the cultural inferences that, that he was nothing but a piece of dirt. He had enough of the trash talk, enough of the closed doors, and enough of the closed minds. He broke all social barriers, ran the race of faith, dropped to his knees and said this witness of faith, if you choose, you can make me clean. You know what he didn't say? Jesus, maybe you can make me clean, or Jesus, I think there's a chance that you can make me clean. Let's see what the committees have to say about making me clean. Let's see what the courts say about making me clean. But he said, if you choose, you can make me clean. You see, the leper, despite all that the world told him he could not do, despite the picture that was painted of a nobody, he had complete faith. He laid bare his life at the feet of Jesus in full trust, pledging the completeness of his faith. Well, saints, sometimes all of us have to confess who we are before we can profess what we believe. But even with the faith the size of a mustard seed. 
we can say to the status quo, we can say to the power brokers of the world, we can say to the demons that hinder us, it is through the blood of Jesus and giving me my life to the King of kings and the Lord of the lords that I can be healed. But we have to turn to Jesus first. Because for Jesus, no one is too far gone. No one is too dirty. But before we come to the Master, we have to acknowledge who we are and what we have done and even the demons that seem to be plaguing our life. In fact, we have to wear out the knees in our pants in prayer. And we have to acknowledge that nothing is impossible with God. Maybe the leper heard that sermon somewhere, read it someplace, and came to God. But interesting response from Jesus in the version that's in the pews, and in my version, I changed the word when I read it. It says that Jesus was moved with pity. The original Greek text, that word was not pity, but ought to be translated as anger. Saints, Jesus was angry. Imagine Jesus. Now in our minds we see this warm and fuzzy Jesus. We see this, this friend of, of, of all who, who come and seek. We see this, this tacit. We see this, we see this Jesus that we love, this huggy Jesus. Kind, gentle Jesus. Angry. He was angry, all right. Salvation is not an easy task. Having nails driven in your hands, it's not a good feeling. It's hard work. You heard the expression, tough as nails. Our Lord was tougher than the nails. But he wasn't angry with the leper. He wasn't angry with the one who needed healing, who came to him in no uncertain terms. He was angry with the establishment for placing barriers before this person. He was angry with those that, that told this person that he couldn't come to Jesus, that he couldn't come to the church, that he was not worthy. The fact is, saints, we're all dirty. And we all need to acknowledge that fact. To win the prize of salvation, we need to play to win. We need to confess who we are and whose we are. But that's only part of the work. Once we acknowledge all that stuff, then we have other things to contend with. We have the world to contend with, who's not quite so, uh, or more judgmental, not quite so loving, not quite so open. There are attitudes that permeate our world and our church that keep people away. But no, no matter what we have done, when we come humbly before the throne, when we acknowledge that we need a Savior in the first place, we will be healed by God's grace. But we need something to get us through, and that is perseverance. 
We need to run the race. This race of salvation with every intent on winning the race. Not just the place. Not just to show up. But to win. Because the alternative could get a little hot. You see, it requires perseverance. It requires having the eye on the prize. And what John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, would say, it requires clinging to Christ. To be able to make the ultimate confession that the leper made, that to say, if you choose Jesus, you can make me clean. No matter what I have done, Lord, you can make me clean. Cleanse me of the addiction of alcohol. Cleanse me of the addiction of drugs. Cleanse me of the addiction of pornography and sex. Cleanse me of all that stuff. Lord, if you choose, you will make me clean. Even me. Whatever Satan has cast in our direction, Jesus can cast out. But sometimes old Satan can get in the way. And something happens as we get closer and closer that we start drawing away. We begin to have doubts. We start looking in other directions. Whether those insecurities come from society or within the church itself, and through all those things, we may just give up. We may say we have gone as far as we can go. We can't finish the race. Well, saints, what if the leper said that? Where would he be? What if he succumbed to that type of attitude? There's a war going on out there. Not of flesh and blood, but of the spirit. And we need the faith to come to the Lord and the discipline to be a winner. Run the race with every intention of winning the race. Why show up if you don't intend to win? I guess I stand before you and I confess that I'm a competitive guy. You may not have known that, but it's true. But there's no reason to run a race without every anticipation of winning the race. There's no guarantees. I remember getting up on the starting blocks in a swim meet next to the state champion. I wasn't it. I lost. When I got up there to win, I had every intention of winning. There's no guarantees. Baptism is no guarantee of salvation either. But run the race, knowing the sacrifice that Jesus made for each and every one of us so that we can run the race of faith and win. The goal is not a perishable wreath, but the imperishable prize. It is by God's grace that we are drawn to the finish line. So how do you win the race? We have a call to holy living, a call, a disciplined life of prayer, of worship, of service, all to challenge us to be exactly what we profess. You profess to be a Christian? There are obstacles, but live the life of a Christian. Do we build that life? Do we build that faith to get by? Or do we build the faith to win? Win's not a bad word. 
Being competitive is not a bad thing, especially in this day of status quo and mediocrity. Win is a good thing. And winning the, the race of faith means to stand firm in faith, to stand firm into why Jesus died for us in the first place, to stand firm that, that no demon is too powerful for Jesus to conquer. No, Jesus was angry at the sin of society and the status quo that allowed people to fall short of their goal. Jesus breaks through what separates us, gives us the drive, gives us the determination to win the race that is set before us. You know, the Lord opens up his arms to all of us. As he opened up to the leper, he'll open up to each and every one of us. If you feel the need to come before the throne and say, if you choose, Lord, make me clean, do so. If there's something that's, that's, that's challenging you, something that's holding you back, proclaim that profession of faith, if you choose, Lord, you can make me clean. For God can heal the most sin-sick soul, can even turn around the most perverse mind. But we need to run the race with every intent of winning. And before we start the race, we need to be facing in the right direction. We need to repent of where we've been and where we have gone and turn back to God. But we can run that race. For Jesus calls us all to be a part. Just as he healed the leper, he will heal us. Because Jesus' call is on each of us, all of us who are weary, all of us who are carrying heavy burdens. And he will give us rest. And saints, that is winning the race of faith. And when you win the race of faith, you will know that nothing will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That is the victory. Amen.